My name is Sweet Storm, or Dulce Tormenta from El Paso, Texas. And if I love wrestling, and you love wrestling, then we love wrestling. Welcome to the We Love Wrestling Spot. My name is Terry Atreide. Today we are with someone who I actually, I've been waiting to have this conversation. I, I reached out to her back in February. Um, and I said I'll wait a little bit. Then, then surprisingly to me, she got announced for Mission Pro Wrestling. She is from El Paso, Texas. Her name is Dose Tormenta or Sweet Storm. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for the opportunity and thank you so much for having me in your show. Uh, I have a question though. Why did you say surprisingly she was at Mission Pro? You didn't expect me to be there? So when you reach out to some, so, okay, I'll tell the story now. <laughs> so I was watching a match. I don't remember which match it was. And I saw you and I was like, oh, she's a luchadora. Okay. So I started looking more and more into it. So mm -hmm. being on as sponsors for certain companies and for Mission Pro, when they announced you, I was like, well, let me not say that. I saw you in Thunder Rosa exchange messages that first. And in my head, I said, hmm, it'd be real interesting if she popped up at Mission Pro. Uh -huh. And then, boom, they announced you. And I was like, oh, my goodness. This like the stars have a line. <laughs> she's going to be at Mission Pro. And I was like, I thought it was going to happen, but I didn't know it was going to come like the next show, like right after I had found yeah. out about it. So that's why I surprised me. I'm not saying that you shouldn't be on the show because yeah. you impressed in your debut. Um but <laughs> she, you threw me off like that. So <laughs> you know, the first question I usually ask is what started your love for wrestling or why do you love wrestling? I started my love for wrestling because of my brothers. Mm -hmm. I come from a family of three older ones, boys, me being the only girl, and then the little one. Uh, we're all luchadores and we're all from El Paso, Texas. Uh, we actually started a pro wrestling company here in El Paso. It's called EP Heroes. Back then it was called New Era Wrestling. And the whole concept of it was to give the newbies the opportunity to show their talent because here in town, it was very difficult for you to have the opportunity to be at a show at the local promotions. Um, so my three of my oldest brothers debuted at first with my parents, with my dad. And I was just the photographer girl. I was the one with the camera. And as I started to see them like with their cool mask, their cool gear, their beautiful colors, the way people love them, the fans, and just the way that they looked, I was like, oh my God, this is for me. And I want to train as well. So my love for wrestling really, really, really began because of my brothers. Okay. Um, now, how long have you been wrestling? I've been wrestling, um, I started training when I was 13 okay. and I did my first roles. Uh, my brother, my oldest brother uh, was the one that trained me. And with my first roles, I was like, oh my goodness, this is not for me. Cause I couldn't get up. It was just so different. Uh, I, was in, uh, I was a volleyball player. So obviously so totally different than what I was doing. Um, so I debuted when I graduated high school in 2015 and I wrestled for 15, 16, 17, 17, for five years. Uh, and then unfortunately I had a concussion with my previous name. Um, I used to be called Delilah. And when I had the concussion, well, I was out. Uh, it lasted for six months, seven, eight months. It was the worst time ever in my life, in my personal life, wrestling life, just the worst time. Uh, it just wouldn't go away until I started to take more care of myself, went to a chiropractor and took medication and just really focused on, you know, for it to get better. And so when I decided to come back, I decided to just start fresh and have a new name. And yeah, it's Dulce Tormenta or Sweet Storm. And so for right now with this name, I have been wrestling for four months. Four months, about the time that came across my radar. <laughs> yes, four months. Now, I did do a little research. Your old name, uh, Delilah. Yeah. Um, they said it came from Delilah and Samson. 
Yes. Uh, was, so, was, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm saying it was given to you by your uh, your family there, your trainers there at, in El Paso. Yes, it was given to me by my dad. Uh, just because of the story, it kind of really combined. Uh, because I used to wrestle men. My brother's local wrestlers here because there was no other luchadoras. Um, and so that's where the name comes from, Delilah, uh, because she was strong and, and, and if you turn it into wrestling, she could wrestle men. And so I did, I actually started intergender matches here in my town in El Paso uh, as Delilah. And yeah, my name was given by my father. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, now, seeing you have a close knit family, um, I, I, I do watch you see you wrestling. I heard you uh, explain about your tattoos that you have on you. Um, can you tell the people about the tattoos that you have on you and what they represent? Yes, of course. Do I show it? Yes, so everybody can see. If you like to, yes. So I have my brothers. I was Lucha Lawyers tatted on me. Uh, this is the little one, and it goes from little to oldest. They'll have a mask because we're luchadores, and I'm not on there because I'm the luchadora. It's the family tattoo. Oh. Okay. So I decided to uh, tat all of my brothers because, unfortunately, they all saw dressing. They focused more on their personal lives. My oldest brother is married, has two kids. You know, he wanted to work and to support his family. And all of my other brothers are graduating college. They're joining uh, the Texas Troopers Academy. Uh, just Everybody is just doing their, their own thing. And so me, as I saw them just getting their life together, I was like, what do I need to do to feel like them? Which is happy and feel like you have a future and just sure about what you want to do. And that's when I turned to wrestling. I said, I'm gonna continue wrestling and I'm gonna continue to tell the story of me and my family and El Paso. Uh, and every time that I wrestle, I'm gonna have them shown. And so that's the tattoo. I'm still working on a two-piece gear because, you know, I, I still need to get a little more fit. Um, but eventually, I'm going to have a two-piece gear. And every time that I get my hand raised up, I'm going to point to my brothers because they're the ones that uh, trained me and made me who I am as a lucha bola. Okay. Uh, I will say this. I was at the Mission Pro show. Mm -hmm. um, the guys around me loved your gear. Um, I see you do have some new gear. Got it's like a little skirt on the back of your outfit, and it's silver and pink. I mean, the colors do pop out. Got some glitter on it. Yeah. If you guys haven't seen it, it is great. Um, now, before we get into Mission Pro, let's talk about. Well, so your family got you into wrestling. Did you watch wrestling growing up? Mm, I want to say I watched wrestling. When I was very young, I think I was like seven years. I used to watch uh, WWE in Telemundo, Canal 48. And go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, you got it. <laughs> uh, and I would watch small things, um, just very little things. I remember watching Edge, John Cena, Kelly Kelly, uh, Maurice. Very little. I watch very little wrestling. Of course, I would wrestle with my brothers. You know, they would grab me and slam me and stuff like that. But to be a a thousand person wrestling fan growing up, no, I was not. I was more into sports. I was more into volleyball. I was more into uh, wrestling. I, I, I was in wrestling in high school. I did pretty good as well. Um, so, yeah. Oh, okay. No problem. <laughs> no. Um... Let's talk about something that that was random, okay? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I was on Instagram uh -huh. and on my personal page, and I follow this guy, and you came across my personal Instagram page, which wrestling really never well people associated with wrestling by the way that I have it set up doesn't come across my personal page. But uh -huh. you were out, and the person you were with caused a ruckus at a mall. Um, Mr. I think it's Danny Duncan. Oh, yes, Danny Duncan. Yes, so this came across, and I was like, Wait a minute. Then I went <laughs> to your page, and I was like, Wait, what, what is going on here? So, so how did that happen that you spent the whole day with Danny Duncan? I, I, I believe, oh my god, 
<laughs> millions of followers on Instagram. If you yes. don't know who this guy so, is. So first of all, the I wasn't a fan of Danny Duncan. I didn't know who he was. <laughs> okay. My little brother, um, he's a huge fan. And he has his merch and watches YouTube, his YouTube channel and everything. And so does my other brother. Um, his name is Andres. And so he's he's six two. He's pretty tall and he's a big guy. So one day he messaged Danny and he was like, Hey Danny, uh, I want to be your personal security guard. Let me know. I'll fly to LA. And Danny replies and he's like, Hey man, what's up? Well, you know what? Not right now. I already have my security. This we're talking about like six months ago, maybe. So when my brother found out that he was coming into town, he messaged him and he was like, Hey, I saw you're coming into El Paso. Do you still need the security guard? And Danny goes, yes, I do, man. Please show up. Uh, I'm going to be by myself. So just, you know, take care of me. Uh, so my, my brother Andres tells my little brother, who's a huge fan. And, uh, they're, they're both like so excited to go and meet Danny and be the security guard, whatever. And I had just gotten out of the gym when they called me. And they were like, Diana, we're gonna be uh, meeting Danny Duncan. Oh, I just said my name. <laughs> we're gonna be meeting Danny Duncan. Uh, so. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna be meeting uh, Danny Duncan. If you wanna be a part, just stop by. We're gonna be at, uh, at this place called The Fountains. Uh, and so I get there and it's a huge crowd. I can't even find my brothers. Uh, I see Danny. I go up to my brother and I'm like, what is going on? Like, who is this guy? That's when I started to like know about Danny. And then he introduced me as his sister. We became really close friends. And that's when we went to the mall. Uh, he went to go visit the store Zoomies because he works with them. And so um, he was very nice. You know, he started to buy his own merch to give out to his fans and everything. But Unfortunately, about two years ago, there was a very bad incident in El Paso. I don't know if you know about it. There was a shooting at the Walmart, and 22 people lost their lives. Maybe rest in peace. And it had forever, had forever impacted El Paso. So the fact that he had a large crowd in the mall, it was very alarming. And people from El Paso started to panic, and they started to scream out, you know, that there was a shooter in the mall. Um, and Danny had no idea, of course, he's from out of town. He has no idea what was going on. And he just caused, like, the mall shut down. The cops came. Um, the SWAT came, helicopters, the news. We were inside. Everybody was screaming. They escorted Danny. They escorted my brother, me, and my, and my little brother out because we were together. We go outside, and it's packed, full of cops. Like, what the hell is going on? You know what I mean? And people from El Paso started saying, Danny and he's like, I, first of all, I have no idea what had happened. It was our, our own people from El Paso, sadly, that uh, they thought it was funny to say that there was a shooter in the mall, but no, there wasn't. Uh, we went to my car. My I have I have a very small car, and Danny is like, please get me out of here because I don't want to get in trouble. I didn't start anything, so I was like, okay, well, let me see where I can take Danny Duncan. You know, um, he got in my car. And there's just people following us. There's people knocking in the car, wanting to take a picture. And I'm just trying to drive out of there. Drive me, Danny, and my brothers out of there. And he had his, um, the guy that is with him that's always recording. So we took him out of town, like maybe 25 minutes out of El Paso. And then they picked him up and they took him away. But it was pretty much the whole day. And it was so crazy. Probably the craziest uh, Saturday I've ever had. Yeah, when I saw it, I was like, El Paso. She, I was like, was this a hoax? And then I looked, I was like, eh, I don't know what's going Then I went over to my wrestling page, and I was like, wait a minute. Is this the same? It is. Oh, okay. So, oh, my God. <laughs> so I was like, that's very interesting. Wow, that's very weird, actually. Uh, that's weird I, I, that, you, that you saw both. Yeah, because I, I know a few, I, I I know someone who's in the El Paso area because of my job. So oh. it came across and I was like, what's and then I came over here and I was like, oh, this is, it's the same these person. two are connected. Which oh is, my God, I'm going to have wow. to make it private. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, I'm you know. Have to make it private, but I mean, it's all right. 
<laughs> yeah, it's just uh, um, amazing. So I don't follow him on my personal, but my wrestling page. You know, I follow all the wrestling, so that that's that's just something interesting. Mm -hmm. So we we must talk about this. <clears throat> Feels like you changed your name, mm -hmm. and more people start paying attention. I wish I remember what match it was that I saw you, and I was like, who is this person that's out here doing it? Oh, it was an event that was going on in Denver. I think you were scheduled on with Thunderdome style, um, Christy James and everybody. Um, Cause you all, you, you do a great job promoting when you do have shows coming up. So yeah. that came across and I was like, okay. And then I reached out to you maybe after two weeks of watching some of your matches. Cause I like to get familiar to see what I know. And I was like, yeah. is her name Delilah or is it Sweet Storm? Yeah. So I've heard the story of why you changed your name, but mm -hmm. can you let the people know? Yes, of course. So when I was uh, Delilah, I was wrestling for my family. So I was mostly local. That's why I didn't really travel much. Uh, the very few times that I did, I only traveled once out of town. Uh, and it was to Irvine, Texas. Mm, I'm not going to say with who, um, but I was wrestling with another luchadora. And, you know, we're getting ready to wrestle. And unfortunately, this girl starts to take shots, drink, and and I'm so scared. I, we're talking about, I'm like 17, and this person is like 25, 27. So we start wrestling. I'm wrestling a drunk wrestler. Not the best experience. Uh, I did get injured. I got injured. I came back home, and I was pretty sad. I thought that's what wrestling, indie, indie wrestling was just wrestling people that didn't care and wrestling people that got drunk. Um, and so that, that discouraged me to keep leaving town. And that's when I was like, why do I need to leave town if I have everything here with my family? You know, I, I became uh, I became known in town as Delilah. Uh, and then I had my injury in 2019. And then I was just discouraged. I was like, maybe wrestling just isn't for me because you know, my concussion was just so bad, it wouldn't go away at all. Like, you have no idea how many days I spent laying in bed and missing out on family's events and missing out on, on having fun, missing out in school, uh, stuff like that. It was, I was very, very sad and depressed, so I thought maybe, like, it was time for me to just not pursue wrestling. And then in 2020, uh, I started to get that feeling like, oh my God, like I miss wrestling. I need wrestling. I need to do this. And I, I want to do this. I want to wrestle. I want to wrestle. And I tried to stay away from it mostly because the very few times that I did wrestle here in town, I received a lot of hate from other wrestlers locally because me as a, the only girl in the family, you know, my dad was a promoter. I started to accomplish many things that very few luchadoras in town would accomplish. And so, because it was me, the daughter, uh, nothing was credited, you know, like, oh, she got it because her dad gave it to her or stuff like that. And so, again, I would let those comments bring me down. And so all of that really just combined together. And I was like, no, I don't want to do wrestling. I don't want to do wrestling. But then something would call me like, do wrestling, do wrestling. My family would tell me to do wrestling. And then when I decided to be back, I said, okay, I'm going to come back. And I'm just going to have a different name, a whole different mentality. I'm just going to leave everything that happened in the past. And I'm just going to move forward with a new name. And so that's why I made the change. Because I feel like Delilah had a lot of hate and bad comments locally. Um, and it just wasn't me. The name was given to me. So it, I just didn't feel like it defined me who I am until I came up with this new name. And it, I think it fits perfect. Um, do you have a story behind the name? Uh, Sweet with Sweet Star? Yeah. Uh, kind, well, yes. So when I would think of names, I knew I wanted to be more into the American uh, pro wrestling scene. Mm -hmm. I know I'm a luchadora and I wear a mask and I belong with the luchadoras, but I want to be that luchadora that can wrestle American style or in the American scene. So I wanted a name that could be translated in English and in Spanish. And so I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. At first I came up uh, with the name in English. I was like, what can define me in the ring? 
So I'm thinking, and then I came up with star. And then we can define me, like me as a person, something that's not too hard for me to, to do. And it's sweet, so sweet storm is the name. Uh, and then when you translate it, it's dulce tormenta. So I think it fits perfect. Great name, like that. Love to hear it. Yeah. Um, now, before we get into this mission pro part, you know, yeah. I put videos up and highlights. So I've got a little highlight clip from Mission Pro um, from this past weekend uh, where you faced Jasmine Allure. But we'll talk about that after. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> I like so, the music. I love the music. Thank you for that. So you did something with Mission Pro that not many have done. You debuted and then you defeated we can say a Mission Pro veteran. She's been there for about three or four shows. Yeah. Um, Jasmine Allure, how did that feel? First of all, Jasmine Allure is a very talented young lady. Uh, when I first met her, she made me feel like I was seven feet high. <laughs> I'm a pretty tall girl. I'm five seven, and so uh, she was shorter than me. Uh, but I absolutely loved her, and I respect her because I have seen all of the opportunities that she's had. For example, AEW, but yet that doesn't change the person that she is in real life. And that truly means so much to me because I'm going to say it. You can be the biggest superstar in the world. And if your personality is sh shitty, you know, I'm not going to be a big fan of you. But if you're the biggest superstar and you're the most humble person in, in real life, I'm going to support you and I'm going to, you know what I mean? Follow you everywhere that you go. And so I feel like Jasmine, really has that angel, that wrestling angel in her because she continues to be humble and, and, and she was a great opponent. Well, you're being very nice here. Um, <laughs> so after you won your match and you were doing your celebration, um, <laughs> Jasmine actually attacked you and she went into her whole uh, conspiracy theory with yeah. Mission Pro, how, they, how they're going over. So do you feel the same way after she attacked you after a loss? Hold on, hold on. I think that was the sweet side of Sweet Storm. Oh, okay, okay. See, there's two sides. Let's okay. not forget that. I think that was the sweet side. Now, the Storm side, that's when I'm in the ring. So Jasmine did put up a good fight. Obviously, I'm new there, and I had never seen her wrestle just in videos. Mm -hmm. But in person, she's a tough little girl. And I say little because of her size. Okay. But you know what? She saw what the storm really is like in the ring. And although it looked like she would, she was going to beat me, mm -mm. I turned it around with the one, two, three during my debut. So I don't know who Jasmine Allure thinks she is. She thought she was going to beat me. During my first time there, I was there to make a name for myself. I was there to show who I really am. Because like you said, not many know who I am. And let me tell you, it's not the first time I'll be at Mission Pro. <laughs> we love to hear it. Uh, <laughs> hey, Jasmine, you got a top tier loss on your uh, <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yes. And you know what? It's crazy because... She thinks she's top tier and then she has tips for me and and then you know she's the best at mission pro before i wrestled so many people were cheering me on without me even stepping in the ring mm. so that's how i know jasmine already has a a, a background 
there on Mission Pro. <laughs> what can you tell me? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, um, she, she, well, we talked to her last fall and she was, she was good. She, she, she was nice, but you know, now she got a little bit more fire in her, um, her and someone who has, uh, on and off heat on with me because I called her top tier and Jasmine came on here and went off, uh, Maddie Rinkowski been going back and forth. So, I mean, you know, I, they mission pro fans started off liking Jasmine, but then her attitude and just this whole top tier elegance that she's doing now, you know, people are starting to turn on her. So I, I don't know, Jasmine conspiracy theory. I don't think she's got a win yet in mission pro. So I think that probably fed into also um, <laughs> when she got pinned again. Well, there you go. That's why she attacked me. Cause she's like this newbie just beat me. Uh, uh, let me just say after. Did, your, did you see the promo she made of me? I, she I, had tips for me and she told me to watch out. Blah, blah, blah. I don't know. I, I did see the promo. Um, and I'm going to be honest here. You know, uh, usually in debuts, you know, I was like, I literally said this on uh, Twitter. And I don't know if you have a Twitter or not. But I said, I expect Sweet Storm to go in, have a great debut, and do everything. But only because she's debuting. And many times when people debut at a company and they face someone who's been at the company a few times, they may not get a win. But I said, people will be talking about Sweet Storm after the match anyway. So picking up the win there, I can just say, uh, the people around me and the people that I knew that was there, they was like, yo. She got some, so you was right. Cause I usually talk to people about, and they be like, "Really?" And then they be, they watch, and then with you picking up the win, they was like, "Yo, Terry, you was right, man. Uh, <laughs> she she's great out there, you know. Like, and it was surprise that everybody's like, it was surprising victory. We didn't expect it, so that made it even five times better for everybody who watched it. So, nice. And you know why it was unexpected? Because I'm not just any wrestler. I'm a lucha lover. Talk your stuff then. <laughs> Let them know. Let them know. So I I got maybe two more questions. I, I do want to ask, do you have a pre-match routine that you go through? Yes. Right. Okay. So when I'm outside pre-match, I already have everything on. First thing that I do is I pray. Because no matter what happens in the ring, tomorrow's never a problem. I pray, I stretch, and I do my routine. Uh, when I was in high school wrestling, I had this little routine, this little shaky, shaky thing that I used to do before my matches. And that's exactly what I do now. I just do a little shaky, shaky. I pray, I close my eyes, I take a deep breath, and then I'm ready to be a sweet star. Put that into you. When you go into the ring, start, call it the storm shake. Yeah, the storm shake. Be ready for all the kisses, because Sweet Storm does blow kisses. Did you see that? You did do that. I did see that. I, yeah. I, will, I did see that during, yes, I did. That, that's true. That is true. So I must ask you, making your debut on Mission Pro winning, Um, well, we'll ask about Mission Pro. Are there any people in Mission Pro that you're looking for? Because you said it's not going to be your last time. I, I can I, I can guarantee it's not going to be your last time going in and picking up a win. Do you have any uh, faces or women there in Mission Pro that you would like to get in the ring with and tussle with? When I was in the locker room, I was very quiet, and I observed everybody. And I feel like the loudest person in the room is the weakest. And there was a wrestler that was pretty loud in there. Uh oh! Wait, 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 Sweet Storm! Before you do this, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Sweet Storm is gonna have a great match because I was the the quietest in the room against Genocide because she's my height, 
And she made a lot of noise at Mission Pro. So I feel like that's definitely a match that I really look forward to. Genocide, you know how we feel about you. We appreciate you, but she <laughs> named you, so we have to do this. Um, sweet storm. Are are you saying genocide was the loudest in the room? Is that what you just said? Well, the one that st that stood out the most to me. Mm, okay. Her makeup, her her gimmick, her height, how strong she is, how tall she stands. Did did you did you see what her and Holly did did this past Saturday? No, I was backstage, but I did see some previews. What's up? Talk to me. What do I need to get ready for? Um. I mean, if you're calling out genocide, you know, her and Holly did fall count anywhere match. They um, you they fought outside the ring. They fought in the little axe square. Um, at one point, they stopped and took a shot together. Um, <laughs> then they fought through the crowd some more. Went up on the stage. A, couple, a suplex happened on the stage. Um, came back down through the crowd. Um, Holly did dived out on her genocide. Did her strong moves. Uh, finisher, Holly did. Genocide with a finisher, did kick. Holly did kicked out. Then another uh, finisher and kicked out. So, Genocide, besides the, I believe, besides the loss to Holly did on not this past one, the one before Mission Pro, she's only taken one loss. And in my book, by all my calculations, she would be next in line for a Mission Pro Championship match uh -huh. um, with her record. So when you call Genocide's name, that's that I would say she's one of the top build people in Mission Pro mm -hmm. at this point. So, you know, it's like you're going straight to the top if that's someone that you're looking at. So, Well, I'm not saying I want to face her June 12. Oh, no. But she will be on my radar, on my luchadora radar. Mm. Definitely a challenge, but nothing is impossible for Dulce Tolman. Hey, genocide, don't hold me. <laughs> uh, just out here trying to make a match, you know, whenever it's ready, you know, <laughs> we there. So outside of Mission Pro, I, I do see you um, getting booked on a lot of other companies out there. Um, so... I always ask this question. This is the real one. If you could pick three, and I'll say independent wrestlers that you could face, do you have a look? Because, you know, everyone, uh, on, if you're not on Twitter, you're on Twitter, everyone puts down, oh, I want this person, this person, this person, and you start seeing matches happen. Um, do you have three independent wrestlers that you want to face, women or men, because you used to wrestle with men also? So, Yes. So I'm not very familiar with the independent scene yet, but I am starting to learn about people, watch people, especially on Mission Pro. I feel like I definitely met a lot of the women's wrestling in Texas. Uh, my previous, because a uh, new mission just asked me this uh, during their YouTube channel. And the first, the couple of people that I said was Roxy and it was Gino Medina. And so in May 10th, I did get booked in Bronzeville, Texas. And guess who I'm going against? I mean, you're going to tell us who, who you're going against. Guess. <laughs> is it Gino or is it Roxy? It's Roxy and Gino. Me, Dulce Tormenta, and my other partner who uh, I still have to learn from, we are going to become a tag team against Gino and Roxy. And so... That's super exciting for me because four months in and I already have like the people that I want to wrestle and it's already happening. Wow. May 10th. Is that is that is that next Monday? Let me see. Hold on. Is it May or June? Did I just give out the wrong date? Hold on. Wait a minute. Because they had just sent me the flyer. Hold on. So May 10th is next Monday. June 10th is a Thursday. June 10th is a Thursday, yes. Oh, okay. Yes, it's right here. Uh, I don't know what you can see. Can you oh, see okay. It? Yeah, I can see it. 
Oh, yeah. Okay. It's a little fire, but I mean, it's the whole thing, and it's going to be exciting. Super Does that exciting. say uh, Title Match Network? No, no. Oh, I thought I think that was so. the title match lo logo up there. Okay. No, it's called uh, Kingdom Wrestling. Kingdom Wrestling, that's the logo that's on there. Mm. Yes. Do you know if there's any way to watch Kingdom Wrestling? Uh, they are on Maz Lucha. Okay. Do you know the channel Maz Lucha? I know it. Um, I have to see if I'm able to get it in my area. <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I think they do upload uh, the whole match uh, on their YouTube channel. Oh, it's even great. We'll they record to... they record mostly Lucha, Lucha Libre events. Oh, yeah. well, so you'll be able to see it on there for sure. Definitely be able to see it. You guys will too. June 10th in Brownsville, Texas. Her and her tag team partner will be fake. Let's give it a second here. Roxy the Prodigy and Gino yeah. Medina. Um, we just spoke to Roxy about three months ago. Mm -hmm. You know, um, well, not for YouTube, but I talked with him uh, Mania Weekend, had a, a, a nice long conversation because, you know, reality of wrestling out there in Texas, somewhere else that needs to book Sweet Storm, get her there. Um, <laughs> get her everywhere. Get her out of Texas, too, you know. Um, but just a great time, you know, get her name out there in Texas and next year WrestleMania, who knows what you will see your headline in or on that weekend. Um, the independent scene out there in Texas is something that's on fire right now and a lot of names are getting noticed and this is one of the names that you should know. Um, so the last, was that my last question? Oh, random question before we do the last thing. No. Uh, I always scoot up like this and come into the camera and go, um, <laughs> the rocker stone coat. Uh huh. Uh, you got to pick one. The rocker stone coat. Did you the rock. It? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> the, rock. the rock. The rock. Well, what's going on? Did I pick correctly? Oh, it's no right or wrong answer. <laughs> no. I know, but like, do, do you pick the rock though? <laughs> All the time. <laughs> <laughs> All the time I picked the rock. Um, I picked the rock nine times out of ten. Just say it that way. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Uh, I appreciate that. Now the <laughs> last thing that we do here is what I like to call the "put yourself over" moment. That's where we oh have you just tell us your social media and anywhere that people can support you. If you got websites or shirts, um, anything else that you have coming up besides. Brownsville, Texas, June 10th. Um, look out for on more Mission Pro shows. We just want you to put yourself over to the people. Oh, nice. That's a sweet, sweet spot. My name is Sweet Storm. And I'm here to bring the storm in any city, any promotion that books me. I will be back on Mission Pro this upcoming June. And I am getting booked at many places out of Texas in the next few months. Dulce Tormenta viene con todo. So follow me on social media. On Instagram, I am SweetStorm underscore. And on Facebook, you can find me as Dulce Tormenta. La más dulce. That's great. See, let's go to Facebook. Uh, a lot of people tell me I'm supposed to get on Facebook more. Um, everybody watching, go, uh, what is it, follow and like our Facebook page. We over 800. Oh, founder. Bye. You found me? Yes. What is it? Dulce oh, yes. Tormenta. Yeah. Dulce Tormenta. That's it. All right. Um, so do you have any t shirts or anything? I do have some t shirts. Um I'm still working on having a page open. I am working with a company called Plain Salty. It's online, plainsalty.com. Um that's the only place where you can buy my merch online. But of course, I do always have some uh, during any show. So, before we leave out of here, um, the last thing I like to ask now is when people see you at a show, is there anything that you want them to take on from the experience of actually seeing Sweet Storm? Uh, what's the lasting impression you want to leave on people? The 
I think the last impression that I want them to really remember about me is my energy. Uh, the kiss, Mwah, of course. And to always remember the impression that I really, really want them to leave with is a luchadora from El Paso. Mm. So just really put the city out there. And I say El Paso where legends are made because I feel like many pro wrestlers from here have been legends or will become legends in the future. We do have several of them, uh, not just in wrestling, but also in other sports talent. Uh, Aaron Jones from the Packers, Khalid, uh, just different people that are coming out of El Paso. So that's why I've referred to it, El Paso, where legends are made. El Paso, where legends are made. And guys, we have just talked to a legend in the making. Yes. Um, Yes, yes. Sweet storm, if you want to call it that. Sometimes I like to say dose for a <laughs> because I just like the way it flows off the tongue. Nice. Um, so I have a question for you. Uh -oh. Have you ever had that in, 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 in your show? <laughs> Surprisingly, yes. Um, <laughs> those sometimes get a little outrageous. So, yeah, Holly did put me on the spot last week. Um, so go, I, I'm open for anything. Go ahead. I want to know what made you start We Love Wrestling because the theme, the song theme that you put on the highlights, We Love Wrestling, is so badass and so unique. And I just want to know what made you have a, a video podcast uh, show called We Love Wrestling. <laughs> um, I've said this a few times, but for you, uh, it wasn't my idea. So I've had the We Love Wrestling page since maybe 2013. Mm -hmm. um, it started in a Facebook group. My friend added me in 2012, and I just felt like being in the Facebook group, I was posting too much to where all down the timeline, it was just me putting wrestling stuff. So. I was like, hey, I'm going to start this on Instagram. So let's fast forward to maybe 2016. Well, 2014, I'm always going to events. So the people already knew my face, um, but I was just be at events. Hey, how you doing? Take a picture, keep going. But they knew who I was. So the pandemic happened. Yeah. And I got approached by about three people who wanted to start doing podcasts, but since I had the following on social media, mm -hmm. they wanted to use it under the We Love Wrestling name. Um, unfortunately, some things happened because I only want, the first question I always ask, why do you love wrestling? What started your love for wrestling? That's all I wanted to ask. And then I, was, I wasn't gonna be on camera for nothing else. Yeah. Um, but people didn't want to mix it. They just wanted to have it completely for their podcast. Mm -hmm. So that turned into other people saying, man, you used to host a lot of stuff. You got the personality. Why don't you start doing it? Uh, one time of doing it turned into actually, what is this? May 3rd. Almost into a year of doing this, which will be June the 3rd. So we're here. Uh, the music came about from the Evolve 10th anniversary show. Um, we was there in Philadelphia and we started the We Love Wrestling chant, me, my cousin, and another person. So <laughs> when I went back to watch the show, because I was like, oh, they had a spot where I was there on camera. Let's just go see it. And I heard the chant so vividly clear. I was like, wow, like you can really like hear that chant. Yeah. So I just pulled that little part. <laughs> <laughs> and my friend here who's a DJ was like, oh, I have two beats that I can go perfectly with that because I was playing around with it, put it just putting yeah. the We Love Wrestling over, over the other songs. And then he sent it back and I was like, well, this will stop Instagram from blocking all my videos with actual people's music. So let's go with it. And okay. then from okay. there, we're here. And uh, 
people people actually love the music and everything going on so i just we, we kept going and uh right now i don't see us stopping um but but we grown people so you know sometimes i gotta do these myself sometimes the ladies are able to join me so we, we just still going with it so that's that, great that's great well, well let me tell you the sweet side of you are you ready okay you're a very approachable guy i saw you i said hi to you you said hi to me and it was just Sometimes you can just feel the good energy in people, and I feel like I felt that with you. So I'm very happy with what you have going on with We Love Wrestling, and I, I wish you the best, and thank you for having me on here. Did you guys hear what she just said? She <laughs> put me over. I feel y'all all the time the on side. here. The sweet side. We're, <laughs> we're going to have to wait and see what the storm side is. So. I, I tell you. <laughs> The storm side really doesn't come out. I'm real laid back in person, but I tell y'all, do not approach me. But I, I got there to the Mission Pro show late, and I wanted to wait until everything was over. But I looked over and I said, "There she is. I have to go up and say something to her." And since I've been watching your wrestling, you met me. Um, let's say I was in fan mode, so I was trying to be cool. I was like normal. I talked to her. We never met. Be be normal, Terry. But I was also like in a fanatic mode, like oh, <laughs> in my head, like she's right here, and I just saw her in a match. And we about to talk, yes. <laughs> so you know, um, I appreciate you thing, saying that. And yeah, truthfully, the same thing for you. When I met you, your energy was good, even in the ring. I, I felt like you had good energy when you post online. Then. I think it was Sunday. You made the post like, "Can you see how happy wrestling made me?" Yeah, and I was like, "This right here just confirmed everything that I, I've been thinking." So I'm, I'm just happy that I was able to have this conversation with you to let more people know about you. Yeah, of course. Thank you so much. And anything that can help me, you know, get my name out there with the people that I meet along the way, I'm, I'm very thankful. Um, just so, so, so thankful with the love that I've been getting in just four months. It really means a lot. And so when I was driving back home, uh, I actually parked on the side of the road and I rushed in the middle because, you know, the roads, they're going super fast. So I had to just wait my moment, run in there, take a pic and then run back and go home. And so I realized like, wow, I'm, I'm really, I'm really doing this. I'm really wrestling. I'm really, you know, trying to make a, a point, trying to make a name for myself and just trying to tell my family story. So yeah. that's why I made the post because it just makes me happy to meet people. Great, uh, great women's wrestlers, men's wrestlers, promoters, fans, just anything. Just a happy person. The sweet side of sweet star. <laughs> now I do, um, I do have to say this. I hope I just didn't forget. Um, because when people watch these spotlights and not to brag i do call this like a little mom and pop shop but certain things start to happen after people watch these spotlights if someone wanted to book you how would they get in touch with you yes yeah, so you can definitely uh send me an email i'm actually going to post my email on my social media on instagram sweet storm underscore uh, but again, you can also DM me. I'm very, I'm very good with answering back, or you can also, uh, message me on Facebook. So just all of my social media or my email works perfectly. Uh, I always have my phone on my hand, so I'm pretty good at, at answering back. All right, guys, there's certain people, you know, come on and when we're done with this, you know, they're, they, they're good in our book. So we want you to look out for sweet storm. Um, we thank you for giving us this time and speaking with us. But as you guys know, I'm Terry, your tradie. And like I always say, if I love wrestling and you love wrestling, then we love wrestling. It's too sweet for no time.